Ask you too, James. That's cool. James, sir, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Thank you for booking me to the layer and cover with your cameras. Yeah, it's small, isn't it? Yeah, it's like yeah. those casting couch things. It's like really yeah. weird, I mean, it's you just take a No, I've got it's intense. No, it is, yeah, it has intense fire. Tense, tell me. Who's it doing here? Why is he doing this? Rugby DJ. Yes. Never the Twitch on me, because you can look. Yes, I mean, look, uh, um, I obviously played uh, rugby across the world the last uh, well, 17 and a half seasons, 18 seasons. Um, I was lucky to, to play for England and British and Irish Lions. Um, I exhausted that as much as I could um, in terms of squeeze all the juice out of it. Yeah. Um, while I was playing, one of the things I really believe is that you need to have work-life balance. You need to have things that are outside of yourself. So yeah. if you have your work and you have your relationship, if the work's going badly, relationships go badly, then you're in hell. What did you have that you own fully? And one of the things was was um, DJ music. I always use it as a tool pre-game, you know, the emotive power of music yeah. and how it kind of um, makes you feel. So one of the things I would always do before a game is, you know, put my headphones on, on the bus, listen to music. When I first started, I was probably the only person doing it. Oh, really? Now everyone's got headphones yeah, on, yeah, everyone's yeah. got music. I'm older than you think. I've had a half paper round. I mean, you, gonna, you look good. Come October, we're going to have a new lid. We're, we're oh, going to get a two for one, you and me. You're going to have to talk about that. That's why we're going to get a two for one. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so I think for me the the, the music was important. I used to go to Vegas and I'd be for a lot, saw yeah. someone at the front of the room or something in the crowd, uh controlling everyone's vibe. I'm an attention seeker, yeah. show off. Yeah. Um and so why would I don't want to do that? I love the techno technological element of it. So yeah, I just got really into it and I've been doing that for sort of 10 years now, playing yeah. all around. Um and obviously when the time it came, I then had to find kind of things that I really enjoyed. Yeah, that was a perfect replacement for rugby, you know, going out there. Playing in front of a crowd, yeah, the right. performance, the preparation, the adulation, the nerves, yeah, yeah. all of that is a less dangerous version of, of rugby. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you get it wrong in certain places, you might get hauled over the decks, but um, they're, they're, close, they're closer to you. They are closer to you. Um, and sometimes when I, when I play some of the, my lesser gigs, some of them are quite vocal. Okay. And I've had, yeah, I had one guy. Can you not on the No, but I had, had to tell security. I had to security cut at times. I said, come here. and said, get rid of that bloke there before I pull him over the top of the <laughs> and then yeah, he can they quickly disappear. I can't quite like that because there's no real danger for the for I would say there is I mean that in Dubai recently the DJ did a six hour day set and um and towards the end of they get quite rowdy someone threw something and I didn't um I didn't see and I don't think they were aiming at me but put it this way you know, when you're hit in the face when you're doing something yeah and my head might have fallen off um, nice. but luckily security dealt, dealt the right job <laughs> I, love, I love the fact that every story ends with security doing yes yeah, there's always uh, needless to say end in environment that's the story <laughs> yeah. of my life knowing this kind of you mentioned what life balance and you were actually you were very vocal throughout your career mm -hmm. about your work life balance yeah. which, which at the time was quite seen as absolute yes was that something which was innately in you you always knew that or was Look, I think I think fundamentally is a kind of lesson I learned very early on in life is if you put work in, um, you will be successful if you have, if you have a plan. And also, no one's going to do it for you. Mm. Uh, no one makes you successful. You know, we live in this this Disney world that if you, you know, you always fall in love with your first love, you live happily ever after. Um, if you're a good person, good things happen to you. The reality is very. And there's also if you struggle, a fairy godmother or a white knight will come over the hill mm. and, and rescue you. And unfortunately, it doesn't work. Work like that. So, um, you know, I was always kind of a bit of a hustler in that regard. I knew the kind of life that I wanted to lead. Um, and I was very vocal kind of about always having that, um, the alternative. So it meant that when I did retire, yes, it was scary. Yes, it was emotional. Yes, there was elements that affect your mental health because of one day you're being something and the next day you're being something else. Um, and you lose your identity. What was important to me is that now I only do things I enjoy. Mm. So, you know, whether it's podcasting, writing books, speaking, DJing, music production, working with corporate stuff, whatever it is, yeah. all of that is evolved around showing off and being a performer yeah. and enjoying myself. I'm not an accountant, I don't work in the, I don't do anything I don't want to do. And that's a luxury that a lot of people don't don't have, but it's something I have to work at continuously. Right. You know, like and the reason I'm here today is I, I you know I start with new agents and say, listen, I do I do a lot of speaking. I speak for two or three times a week. I want to do more. Yeah. Who are you with? Who's the best in the game? Who can we go and speak to? And I said, speak this corner. Let's go and have a chat. Right. And that's why yeah. And that's why it comes about. It's not because someone said, oh, I think you should do it. It's because I said, put me out there. How do we do it? How do we open yeah. doors? So, so let, me, let me ask a question. Can we go off that theme? Is that, again, when you were outspoken, when you were dealing with work family, yeah. when you were in rugby, obviously it was very different from kind of your teammates and how yes. they do the whole thing. And we're currently in the world we're in, kind of the world we're existing in, people are working through this hybrid work from home culture. Yes. How do you deal with people looking at you, like you turn around saying, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Life, kind of, and maybe your teammates want to, you're relying on in the pitch. I, I think, um, look, people that are, look, people are entitled to opinion. I think in, in 2023, 
a lot of um, people now have a voice and think it's important, but actually sometimes um, direction and what's good for them and uh, what is important to the team as a whole um, isn't necessarily what your own what you want as an individual. Mm. And I think you know, say the work at home thing is a perfect example. You know, your home should not be where you work, sleep, live, entertain, and you need to have a balance. You need to have a separation. And you know, unfortunately, now a lot of people uh, don't want to put put in what required. They want to do the bare minimum. They don't want to. They don't want to commit. They aren't interested in um, making that sacrifice. And perhaps it's because I always just, just you know put a distinction between there's a career and there's a job. A job is what you turn up, put money, you know, mm. food on the table. You don't really care. Mm. A career is something you're invested in that actually you quite enjoy. It's going to have its highs and lows because everything seems like a job. Rugby seems like a job at times, but a career is something you invest in. I think by working at home, by not committing, you're not interacting with your team. You're, you're socially alienating yourself. Mm. It's not good for you. I don't care what anyone says. Yes, you might be as productive, but you need to come in, and interact with people. Have the intensity, have a bit of jeopardy in the, in the, in the office life, deal with those um, different emotions. And I think we're now getting to the point where everyone's too scared to say what they actually mean. Mm-hmm. And when I was running a team, I'd say, look, you know, by all means, if you want to have a day a week at home, that's fine. We need you in, we need you in tracks, we need you face to face, we need you accountable, I need you part of the team, I need you to feel what emotions going on in the office, and I need you to bring that energy. If you don't do it, go away. And mm-hmm. the thing is, because there's always somebody that will do your job, whether you want to do it. And I think, unfortunately, now where everyone's sort of, where emotions, are, and feelings are sort of overriding facts and um, you know science. Yeah. You, you, you're going to fall apart. And things people forget that there's that hunger out there because you don't do it, someone else will. And I think we get a bit complacent, going, "Well, you know, I feel this. No interest what you feel. Yeah. Shut up and get on with it." Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I think on that note, James, thanks for time. Any chance to get to rant? I'm always good. No, I, I love it.